हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी आर ऑलरेडी इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी आर ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड विथ द स्टार्टर वट इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ स्टार्टर दैट वी हैव सीन फर्स्ट सो वट इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ स्टार्टर यू रिमेम्बर वाई स्टार्टर आर रिक्वायर्ड यस सो एज वी नो दैट uh in three phase induction motor the magnitude of induced emf in the rotor circuit that is e to r it is uh, depending on the slip of the induction motor so that is e to r equal to s times e2 okay and this e to r decides the magnitude of the rotor current because i to r it is uh, given by i to r is equal to s times e2 divided by under root of r2 square plus s x2 whole square right so and we know that at start speed of the motor is zero that is n equal to zero and slip is at its maximum that is unity so as s is equal to 1 e2 r will be more because it is s times e2 So e to r will be almost equal to e two, and this e to r is resulting the i to r. So i to r will be more. Consequently, it will draw the more current, right? And this current will be of the order of five to eight times the full load current at start. Okay. So this we have seen. and because of this increase in the current what happens due to this heavy inertia of current at start there is a possibility of damage of the motor winding and such sudden inertia of current causes large line voltage drop thus the other appliances connected to the same line may be subjected to the voltage spikes which may affect their working and we want to avoid that's why such type of situations and in order to avoid such type of situations we are using the starters so this is the necessity of starter then we have seen the types of starters stator resistance starter auto transformer starter star delta starter rotor resistance starter and direct online starter so out of which two we have already covered uh, we'll briefly revise those two so uh, stator resistance starter as we have seen uh, as its name indicates stator resistance starter so in the stator winding of this induction motor we are adding some external resistance at start so at start this maximum value of resistance is added in each phase so as the Uh, resistance is added in that there will be drop across this resistance so power will be dropped across this and the lower voltage will be applied to the stator winding of this induction motor okay and as the power is dropped across this the less voltage is applied at this particular winding the e2 will be small that means e2 is small at start and thus the e to r will be less and i to r will be less so that means the heavy inertia of current will be avoiding in this manner but what is the drawback of this uh, method as the uh, the advantage is that the it is having a simple construction and it is cheap but what is the drawback of this mode, uh, this type of starter as we are adding the resistance and we are dropping the power across this resistance so there will be large power loss due to this resistances right and the also what is the another drawback another drawback is the starting torque will be reduced because the starting torque in expression of tst we know that it is proportional to e2 that is the applied voltage and as we are reducing the applied voltage the starting torque will be reduced so these are the 
major drawbacks of this system okay then next type of starter we have seen is the auto transformer starter the principle uh, remains same only uh, instead of dropping the power across that resistance we are using here the auto transformer so this is the three phase star connected auto transformer so with the help of this tapping arrangement we are applying the uh, reduced amount of voltage uh, to the stator winding initially so at start the switch uh, switch uh, this is the change over switch which is uh, controlled uh, you can say you can, uh, it can be controlled using uh, the relays so this change over switch will be at the position uh, um, initially it will be at the position of start so at start it will be in this position that means one will be connected here two will be connected here three will be connected here four five and six so that this applied supply voltage this supply voltage will be applied reduced voltage by this transformer and will be applied to this particular phase and similarly all three phase voltages will be reduced with the help of this tapping and will be applied to the stator windings of this three phase uh, stator winding of this motor okay so that as we are reducing the voltage using this three phase auto transformer the purpose of reducing voltage will be served and the um, heavy inrush of current will be reduced at start and whenever the motor will achieve its uh, 70 to 80% of the speed then this change over switch will be switched to this uh, under run position it will be switched to this so that one will be shorted to two through this one one arrangement then three terminal will be shorted with four through this two two arrangement and five will be shorted through 3 3 to 6 so that this three phase supply will be directly applied to stator winding and this three phase auto transformer will be bypassed so this directly voltage will be applied to the stator winding under running condition so the major advantage of this system is the starter is simple in construction and cheap and uh, mm, uh, the mm, um, major drawback of previous uh, method which was the reduced uh, um, uh, voltage uh, or the power um, we were consuming in the resistance in the form of heat but here the uh, change um, um, uh, reduced power um, uh, reduced voltage we are applying it through the auto transformer so there won't be any uh, temperature rise or uh, power dissipation uh, will not be there okay uh, so that is the advantage of this and again the it is used for both star and delta um, type of uh, uh, stator winding connections but this method is expensive because of this three phase uh, auto transformer that is the major drawback and uh, another uh, drawback is same as uh, we are applying the reduced voltage then starting torque will be uh, reduced because starting torque is directly proportional to the applied voltage e2 so these two we have already seen yesterday so today we'll start with the next starter uh, which is star delta type of starter uh, you know that if i am connecting this uh, starter winding in star fashion then uh, the voltage applied will be reduced that reduced by a factor of 1 by root 3 and uh, if i am connecting this uh, stator winding in delta fashion then the supply voltage will be the normal uh, vl uh, root volt um, uh, that is the line voltage okay so i can reduce the voltage by root 3 times that is 1 by root 3 uh, vl i can apply if i am uh, making the star connection of this winding and if i am making delta connection of this winding 
i am applying the real line voltage as it is so that is the basic principle of this so at start i am using this winding as a star connected fashion and under normal running condition i am using this winding in a delta connected fashion and that arrangement i have made it through this uh, type of connection a uh, tpdt switch that is triple four uh, triple pole double throw switch now this switch whenever it is at this position then the terminals 3 dash 1 dash and 2 dash 3 dash 1 dash and 2 dash these three terminals will be shorted together by this arrangement so this is it will make a star connect um, star connection of this particular winding three windings if i am shorting this three terminals together and shorting of this three terminal together if i am placing this tpdt switch at this particular position at start it will act as if it is a star connected winding and under running condition this tpdt switch will be moved to this particular position that means this 3 dash will be connected to 1 1 dash will be connected to 2 and 2 dash will be connected to 3 so that as 3 dash is connected to 1 1 dash is connected to 2 and 2 uh, dash is connected to 3 terminal of this winding this will form a delta so under running condition it will form a delta so that this supply voltage which i am applying to the stator winding it will be 1 by root 3 at start and whenever 70 to 80% of the speed is achieved i am changing over this tpdt switch under running condition so that this arrangement will be delta and the applied voltage will be the line voltage so uh, that's all about this uh, starter so i'll change over this tpdt switch from start to run position whenever 70 to 80% of the speed is achieved okay so um, the major advantage of this is, uh, system is it is the cheapest system of all and it is the maintenance free operation right these are the two major advantages and what is the limitation that it is suitable for normal delta connected motors only okay and the factor with which the voltage changes is only 1 by root 3 which cannot be changed so that factor we cannot change because in star connected winding it is reduced voltage is reduced only by root 3 times okay so this is all about this method then next is the rotor resistance starter so rotor resistance starter as its name indicate only it is applied for the wound rotor type of uh, motor or slip ring type of motors in which we can add external resistance in the rotor circuit and we cannot add uh, any external resistance in the another type that is a squirrel cage type of induction motor so this is the slip ring uh, type of motor this is the stator winding of it and this is the uh, rotor of it and to this uh, rotor winding through this slip rings we are adding a external rheostat uh, in every phase so that in uh, each phase we can add one resistance okay so these three resistances uh, connected uh, in uh, star fashion uh, you can say that it is a external rheostat arrangement we can vary this uh, resistance Uh, we can add maximum resistance at start through this uh, brush and slip ring arrangement to this particular uh, rotor winding and whenever the um, uh, this you can uh, further reduce the value of resistance you can reduce um, while the motor is operating whenever the motor will re uh, reach to its 70 to 80% of the speed then these slip rings will be shorted together and this external resistance is removed so this operation we have already seen in the uh, starting uh, at start when we have seen the uh, construction of uh, op construction and operation of slip ring types of uh, motors okay so in this way 
by adding the external resistance if you are adding the external uh, resistance in this then the um, um, induced current in the rotor i to r that will be reduced and that is our main purpose of starter to reduce the um, initial value of resistance okay then um, the major advantage of this method is that the it is controlling the starting current as well and the added advantage of this is that the starting torque is of this motor is also improved as starting torque is directly proportional to r2 and as we are adding the value of resistance in this the starting torque is improved and that we have already seen that that is the major advantage of this uh, wound rotor or slip ring type of uh, induction motor okay and the last type of uh, starter is the direct online starter or dol starter this type of starters are used in small capacity of motors having ratings less than 5 hp so less than 5 horse power uh, motors we are using such type of uh, starters because the starting current is not very high in such motors okay and these can withstand such starting current without any starter and without any damage in the motor okay so thus there is no necessity of reducing the applied voltage to control the starting current and such motors use uh, this type of uh, dol type of uh, starters um, for uh, uh, to connect the stator directly to the supply lines without any reduction in the voltage hence the stator uh, starter is known as the direct online starter okay do these uh, this type of starter does not reduce the applied voltage it is used because it protects the motor from various severe abnormal conditions like over voltaging over uh, loading low voltage single phasing etc so all these um, advantages you can uh, have by uh, using such type of uh, starters okay now in this uh, uh, there is a magnetizing coil and uh, it is connected uh, through this relay having no contact which is normally open and this nc contact which is normally closed okay then this is the thermal or overload uh, relay and this fuse so this arrangement is there and this is the contact to keep the coil energized so whenever this is moved at this particular position this will be shorted and this coil will get energized okay and this supply will be uh, connected to the motor directly when this coil is de energized this contact will be removed and this will be disconnected and uh, this supply will be connected directly to this motor using these three contacts okay so the no contact is normally open at start um so at start no is pushed for fraction of second due to which the coil gets energized and attracts the contactor so stator directly gets supply the additional contact provided ensures that as long as supply is on the coil gets supply and keep, keeps the contact in on position when nc is pressed whenever the uh, speed of 80 70 to 80% speed is achieved this nc contact is pressed then the coil circuit gets opened due to which coil gets de energized and motor gets switched off from the supply under overload condition 
current drawn by the motor increases due to which there is an excessive heat produced which increases the temperature beyond limit so thermal relay will uh, get open due to high temperature protecting the motor from overload conditions okay so i hope you have understood all the types of starters now we'll fastly cover the speed control of uh, three phase induction motor so question may be asked in the exam what are the different uh, speed control uh, methods of three phase induction motor explain okay so as we know that three phase induction motor is practically a constant speed motor like a dc shunt motor so in case of three phase induction motors it is very difficult to achieve smooth speed control and if speed control is achieved by some means the performance of the induction motor in terms of its power factor efficiency etc gets affected adversely okay then for induction motors we know that n is equal to ns into 1 minus s so as n is equal to ns into 1 minus s we can change the speed of induction motor by either changing its synchronous speed ns or by changing the slip right similarly the torque produced in case of three phase induction motor if you remember it is given by torque is directly proportional to s into e2 square into r2 divided by r2 square plus s x2 whole square so as the parameters like r2 and e2 are changed then to keep the torque constant for constant load conditions motor reacts by change in its slip effectively its speed changes okay thus the speed control of the induction motor three phase induction motor can be basically controlled by two methods either from stator side or from rotor side so these are the two methods so from stator side it includes the following methods as supply uh, frequency control to control ns called v by f control method as we know that the ns it is equal to 120 f by p so we can change the number of, uh, we can change the frequency to change the ns so um, that is the first method supply frequency control okay then controlling the number of stator poles we know that ns is equal to 120 f by p so we can change this number of poles to control the speed then supply voltage control as we know that torque is directly proportional to e2 square so that e2 is nothing but the applied voltage so as applied voltage is changed we can change the speed and adding the rheostats in stator circuit so again this will change the applied voltage so that it is same as this method as it is changing the uh, supplied voltage uh, e2 then it is changing the um, changing its uh, speed okay so this is one of the method for changing the speed this is for uh, from the stator side and from rotor side the um, it includes the following methods adding the external resistance in the rotor circuit so that is the uh, method um, um, which we can uh, use in uh, the uh, slip ring or wound rotor type of motor okay and another is the cascade control method uh, or injecting slip frequency voltage into the rotor circuit so this is same as this adding external resistor so we'll see all these methods in detail one by one so from stator side uh, first method is supply frequency control 
or V by F control. As we know that this expression N S is equal to 120 F by P. By changing the frequency, we can change the uh, N S. So we can use this method to control the uh, speed. Okay, but we know that we also know that the expression for air gap flux it is given as phi g is equal to one upon four point four four k one t p h one into v by f, where k one is the stator winding constant, v is the supply voltage, t p h one is the stator terms per phase, and f is the supply frequency. This is the uh, air gap flux, and we know that there is a Uh, constant air gap maintained between the stator and rotor winding now if this um, air, um if this uh, frequency we are changing for changing the speed if we are changing the frequency what will happen as frequency is change the value of air gap flux will also be affected this may result into saturation of the stator and rotor cores such saturation leads to sharp increase in the no load current of the motor that is the magnetization hence it is necessary to maintain the air gap flux constant when supply frequency we want to change so if we want to change the supply frequency we need to Uh, maintain this supply uh, voltage to frequency ratio to a constant value uh, so to achieve this saturation we need to maintain this v by f ratio to a constant value which ensures the constant air gap flux giving speed control without affecting the performance of the motor okay hence this method is also known as, known as v by f control method okay so hence in this method the supply to the induction motor required is variable voltage and variable frequency supply and that can be easily achieved by the electronic scheme using converter and inverter so we know that the ac supply input voltage uh, ac supply which is normally available is having the ac input having constant voltage and constant frequency so we are having the constant uh, voltage supply as per indian standard it is 230 volt uh, for single phase and having 50 hertz frequency if it is four uh, three phase supply then it is 440 volt and 50 hertz so in both the cases the supply voltage as well as frequency both are the constant one now we want to vary the frequency so uh, in order to change the speed so if we want to vary the frequency if we are varying the frequency as it is affecting the uh, air gap flux and um, which is affecting the uh, saturation Uh, or uh, um, um, saturation of the uh, stator and rotor cores which uh, increases the no load current of the motor and if we want to avoid this we want to keep this v by f ratio constant by varying the frequency that means we should vary the voltage and frequency simultaneously by keeping this ratio to a constant value so that this frequency will be varied to vary the speed and this v by f ratio will be maintained to a constant value so that this air gap flux will be maintained to a constant value and this we are this arrangement we are uh, making with the electronic circuit arrangement of converter and inverter so this uh, um, constant voltage constant frequency supply it is applied to a converter so that it is converted into a dc supply having a constant voltage and zero frequency right then this is applied to a inverter circuit which converts this constant voltage zero frequency supply into a variable voltage in variable frequency ac supply 
in which you can vary the voltage and frequency simultaneously by keeping the ratio to a constant value and that is the our purpose so we have served this purpose of varying voltage and frequency by maintaining the ratio of v to f to a constant value and then we are applying this to a stator of this induction motor okay so this is the torque slip characteristics uh, uh, shown uh, for normal frequency this is the torque slip characteristics of this uh, motor um, slip equal to 0 and slip equal to 1 that is at um, start and at the um, maximum speed okay or synchronous speed as equal to 0 if you want to operate this for a frequency which is greater than f then the characteristics will be shifted to this if we are operating frequency is less than the uh, f normal frequency then your characteristics will be shifted to this one that is the difference okay so the major uh, disadvantage of this uh, system is that individual scheme for separate uh, motor is required which makes it costly because we cannot uh, use one system designed for uh, one particular motor to another motor that's why the, this is a costly affair then second method is the supply voltage control or uh, we'll see this uh, first by controlling the number of poles so as you know ns is directly uh, proportional or ns equal to 120 f by p we can change the number of poles as we are changing the number of poles ns can be changed but number of poles you can change only having two speeds so in this method it is possible to have only one or two speeds one double of other by changing the number of poles so this is possible by changing the connections of the stator winding with the help of simple switching to change the number of poles in the ratio of 2 is to 1 okay in other method two separate stator windings wound for different number of poles and with pole changing facility are provided with this four different speeds are possible okay so this method is very much suitable for squirrel cage type of induction motors as squirrel cage rotor automatically adjust itself to any number of the stator poles so this uh, figure is shown uh, if uh, your uh, number of poles are four uh, then the speed is twice ns if you are uh, increasing the number of pole to uh, twice that is eight then your speed will be reduced to half as ns is inversely proportional to p so if you are uh, if you have doubled the pole speed will be half or if you are um, half the number of poles your speed will be doubled okay so that is uh, the uh, this so smooth speed is not available in this type of method so only step changes speed you can changes in the form of steps okay then supply voltage control method so torque is directly proportional to s e2 square r2 uh, or you can say directly torque is directly proportional to e2 square and e2 is nothing but e2 is directly proportional to v because e2 is the rotor induced emf at stand still and that depends on the supply voltage v so as v is constant e2 will be constant so torque will be constant if you want to change the torque you have to change the v right so torque is directly proportional to you can say um s into v square for constant r2 right so for low slip region um a type of induction motor this uh, low slip region means this term will be very very small you can neglect it and this is with this will be the dominating term 
so if it is a constant you can re, um, uh, replace it in a proportionality constant so torque will be proportional to s into v square right so um, this is the method by changing the uh, applied voltage we can change the speed uh, so that uh, this method we have already seen in the uh, starter um, um, starters um, by changing the supply voltage we can change the speed so with uh, reduced uh, voltage and for normal voltage these are the uh, graphs shown so um, due to reduction in the voltage current drawn by the motor uh, it increases and um, large changes in the voltage is required for small changes in the speed this is the major drawback of this particular method and the same method is uh, the fourth one by adding rheostats in the stator circuit so by adding the rheostats in the stator circuit we are dropping the power across this this we have seen in the uh, starters also so we are dropping the power across this and reduced power is applied to the stator and as reduced power is applied that means reduced voltage is applied its speed will uh, be uh, changed as the speed a torque is directly proportional to v square okay so this we have um, already seen that uh, this method is not uh, efficient from the speed control point of view uh, hence it is used only as a starter rather than the uh, speed control method because the um, entire power loss will be taking place across this resistances so uh, we'll move fast as uh, time is uh, running out then uh, from rotor side by adding external resistance we can in the rotor circuit we can change the speed as we have already we have seen in the starter also and in the uh, start also in wound rotor type of uh, motors uh, or in slip ring type of motors uh, we can add the external resistance and uh, as the its uh, torque is directly proportional to r2 by adding the uh, external resistance we can change the uh, speed of that particular uh, we can change the torque or uh, speed of that particular uh, motor okay so um, this is the method of uh, adding external resistance and uh, the second uh, method but the method of uh, adding uh, external resistance it is having the major uh, drawbacks uh, as disadvantages as um, first is the large speed changes are not possible because as uh, um, pc uh, we we know that uh, for large speed changes large resistance is required and if uh, uh, large uh, r2 should be there okay and we know that pc is equal to Uh, that is the rotor uh, copper loss pc equal to 3 times uh, i to r square into r2 so if value of r2 is more then pc or copper loss will be more so that is the major drawback that's why this method cannot be and also this method cannot be used for squirrel cage type of induction motor then speeds above the normal values cannot be obtained and as large power loss occurs due to a large i square r loss sufficient cooling arrangements are required for these uh, motors to make the external rheostats uh, cool okay and uh, adding this external rheostat makes the system more bulky and expensive and due to this power losses efficiency of this uh, will become very low and that's why this method is very rarely used for speed control okay then second method is the cascade control method so in cascade control method there are two motors connected in cascade in such a way that one main motor is there to so to this main motor 
the stator winding is directly connected to the three phase supply and through the slips of this main motor we have connected the supply of this second auxiliary motor so the stator supply of this auxiliary motor is connected from the slip rings of this slip ring and brush arrangement of this first main motor okay and then this slip rings of this uh, auxiliary motor we have added some external resistance in this uh, external um, circuitry okay so this method is uh, a cascade uh, connection of uh, two motors so one of the two motors in this the it must be of uh, slip ring type which is the main motor and uh, the second motor which is auxiliary motor that may be a slip ring type or a square l cage type then the stator of the main motor is connected to three phase supply directly that i have already told you while the supply of the auxiliary motor is derived from the slip frequency from the slip rings of the main motor okay this is called the cascading of the motor if the torque produced by both acts in the same direction cascading is called the cumulative cascading if the torques produced are in the opposite direction cascading is called the differential cascading so based on that there are four uh, different speeds possible this first uh, a b c d so first is ns equal to 120 f by pa uh, with respect to synchronous speed of a independently then with respect to speed uh, synchronous speed of b independently with the motor main motor is uh, disconnected and b is directly connected to the supply its ns will be equal to 120 f by pb and third running set as cumulatively cascaded with n equal to 120 f by pa plus pb as it is cumulative cascaded and as it is differentially cascaded in fourth it will be pa minus pb okay so um, this method is also rarely used due to the drawbacks as it requires two motors which makes the set expensive then smooth speed control is not possible the operation is complicated the starting torque is not sufficient to start the set and set cannot be operated if pa is equal to pb so that's all for this and the last topic of this uh, is the applications of three phase induction motor so square l cage type of induction motors they have moderate starting torque and constant speed characteristics and that's why they are preferred for driving fans blowers water pumps grinders lath machines printing machines and drilling machines where we require constant speed and having moderate torque of type of operations and the second type slip ring type of induction motors they are having high starting torque and having uh, and Uh, as high as the maximum torque so as it is having high starting torque the applications wherever starting torque high requirement is there like lifts hoist elevators cranes and compressors in such applications these type of motors having high starting torque requirement are preferred mostly so thank you so here your fifth unit of uh, syllabus uh, having two parts three phase induction motor and single phase induction motor so we have completed three phase induction motor in next class we'll try to start and finish off with the three uh, single phase induction motor so we'll stop here for today thank you bye good day and take care